Hey everyone, my name is Chris Packett. I'm a part of Group 18, Future Managers of America. Uh, we have some great team members on our team. We have Al. Um, he's great at being consistent on time, always thinks about what we need to get done. Um, then we have Taylor and Noah. They're both really awesome at um, the creative content, uh, coming up with ideas, episodes, and they're always on time as well. And then Daryl, production genius, He's the one that really mans the videos and edits and makes sure that everything's good on a technological side. And I do my part as well. Um, so without further ado, let's, let's jump into the project. Our TV show is called Capital Crisis. And just to go back to give a little overview of why we chose this particular topic, um, we wanted to piggyback off the idea that at the upper management level, there may be some stereotypes about how they could manipulate the company due to their power to give them above average returns. Um, sometimes that may come from manipulating stock prices, which we will see that our TV show is based on, or embezzlement, and anything re re related to a white collar crime. Um, and the main theme of our TV show is how greed um, can be a catalyst for unethical situations. Moving on to the characters, um, all the way to our left we have Amelia Barlow. Um, to the right we have, uh, this is Stephen Browner, to the right of that, Tyler Johnson, and to the right of that we have uh, Mr. Griffin. He is the uh, main person of our TV show. And so, just to give a little background on each character, <clears throat> Jack Griffin is the CEO of Griffin Capital, and he is the mastermind behind this unethical situation. He originally didn't want to um, do this, but well, as we'll see later in our episodes, was enticed into doing unethical things. So he's the one that created the model for embezzling the money and uh, manipulating the stocks. He's great at uh, building relationships. He's very, um, he's the type of person that can put on a mask for anyone he's talking to just to build that relationship. And he's a long-term thinker. Moving on to Amelia Barlow, this is his right-hand woman. Uh, she's the CFO of Griffin Capital, and she's actually the one that comes up with the idea to do the unethical um, things. And so <clears throat> she pushes for this above average return, and doesn't have a strict, uh, she doesn't follow a strict code for ethics. She loves the flat organization and the power it has. Uh, moving on to Steven Browner, he's the new employee at Griffin Capital and he comes across um, this, these files and is faced with this ethical dilemma of whether he should blow the whistle or let it slide. And we'll see later that he does become the whistleblower um, he's a smart guy, he's respectful, and he believes that the client should come before the company. Lastly, Tyler Johnson. Tyler is Steven's best friend. He is the consulting um, factor in, within this, within this uh, story. And it turns out that Tyler doesn't, have, doesn't follow a strict set of um, ethical guidelines either. And so he builds a good relationship with Jack and ends up um, going along with the scandal, as we'll see in, in the following slides. The summary of the, the story is, um, just to give a little background, Griffin Capital is a top-tier investment firm tied to loyal clients and is ahead of the game. The company hired a handful of new associates several months ago to deal with chaotic paperwork and trades, Stephen Browner being one of those new associates. The CEO of the company is Jack Griffin. Mr. Griffin is a fantastic manager of his company. His perseverance and leadership gets the company through tough times, and he, is, and he is one of the best at delegating tasks to his employees. However, because of the horrible trades, the structure of the company is slowly crumbling due to an internal problem inside Mr. Griffin and the company. I feel like when the, the rise of ethical dilemmas starts at a point of chaos, so there, there's a, um, a decision that has to be made, and the decision arises in in situations that are um, not normal so that point 
is the fact that the company is crumbling. And Jack Griffin has to make a decision. He has to figure out what he's going to do next. So, like I said, they, they hired a, some new associates, Stephen Briner being one of them. And he is, is really smart. He outthinks the, the rest of the associates and, um, and the entire office. So, <clears throat> after a few weeks, he discovers these files, these documents that show this unimaginable harm to many clients in the market. And um, this is the point at which he's faced with the ethical dilemma of whether he should blow the whistle or uh, let it let it slide. <clears throat> so, who's our target audience? Um, we're mostly trying to go for millennials and above, to um, because they're more informed about the, the the crisis and the scandals that happened in the early 2000s. And so. Um, It'll focus on an ethical decision-making and dilemma in the workplace through lower and upper management. And the driving factor for our focus on the younger generation is to further grasp the unethical concept used during the financial crisis and financial scandals that occur way too often. Some of the management concepts that we uh, associate with this TV show are above average returns, and we can see that through um, the reason why this ethical dilemma even came up in the first place is to get more money. Managerial ethics, uh, strategic corporate responsibility model. This is, I think, this is a huge part of it because it's, it is literally the core of the ethical dilemma in, in that they have the, this responsibility to their stakeholders, their um, shareholders, their their clients, their the associates, everyone associated with this the corporate structure, and um, at the end it comes down to it's. It's the company or it's the well-being of everyone associated with the company. It's almost like putting this facade up to, sh to keep the company going even though it's based on false um, data. So um, another management concept is whistleblowing. Stephen Browner is um, whistleblows on Jack Griffin and Amelia Barlow. Planning strategic, operational, and tactical. Flat organizational structure, as Amelia points out, that um, she likes the, the power that comes with this structure. And then cross-functional job rotation, having many things to do uh, within the job, having many functions with, within your job. <clears throat> now to get more into the technical side of what the episodes are all about. Um, let's move me over here. So we're going to be going over the episode, episode one, which is focused on strategic corporate responsibility model. And um, so Jack and Amelia, the CEO and CFO respectively, are at their favorite cafe. And Jack is impatiently brainstorming with Amelia about what to do to save their company. They, uh, Jack brings up to her that the, you know, the company is not doing well financially and Amelia being the CFO has this brilliant idea. So um, she basically recommends that selling fake stocks is the way to go to raise capital. Jack doesn't really want to go with this. Um, he doesn't want to create any agency problems, but she does reassure him that it's the only way. And then although unethical, Jack gives in, and they begin with the scheme. Meanwhile, Stephen, an ethical, by-the-book kind of guy, is worried about his first day working under Jack. He calls his longest-known friend Tyler, and Tyler jokes with Stephen, reminds him um, with his hard work and ethical background, there's no one better for the job. Episode two, this one's focused on above average and below standards. So the clients are seeing above average returns for the industry and is attracting more clients to fold into the scandal. So basically it's this uh, compound effect of these clients are actually not supposed to be getting these above average returns, but manipulating the stock prices makes it so that even more people want to come in and it's just further, uh, what's the word, exacerbating the problem. So Mr. Griffin and Amelia are at the top of the management and uh, let a little mistake turn into an ethical nightmare. After firing upper management, they turn their capital group into a flat structure where they have to have total say and control over operation accounts. The perfect plan to build a scandal on, especially after hiring new associates. Um, definitely want to emphasize the flat structure and how um, 
they're they're getting getting rid of this hierarchy to where they are the only ones that can make this these big decisions um, and also they can hide things easier because of you know they don't need to tell the new associates about what they're doing though Stephen Browner is the new associate who comes in and finds out what's going on and has the objective of doing right by others so episode three is, the concept is uh, focused on whistleblowing and within this episode this is where the truth comes out. This is where Stephen Browner finds all of the things that Jack and Amelia are up to. Finds things such as fraud documents, fake stocks, and insider trading documents. Um, and this is where he has to face the decision of what he should do. So instead of he comes up with a plan to tell Amelia about it and ends up just telling his mom instead. Um, in instances like these, where an employee or client knows about something that's going on and uh, basically tells everyone about it is considered a whistleblower like uh, Stephen is right here and then lastly in episode four this is where we uh, touch on the concepts of planning and managerial ethics and in this episode everything is getting sorted out and this is where careful planning comes into place so Stephen has to come up with a strategy to bust his boss for the wrong and has been doing um, and what he's been doing to the people that are investing in the company and he calls the SEC reports it he reports it to the SEC um, and in this closing episode <clears throat> is the code of managerial ethics is completely broken managerial ethics are set by the upper management to define what's wrong and right and Jack and Amelia completely go against this so um, yeah that's that wraps up our, our story um, for now, anyways, we, we plan on having a couple more episodes in here. Um, so, you know, we, we figure out what happens with Jack and Amelia, whether they get caught or not. Um, you know, Tyler Johnson comes into, into play a little bit here, and we figure out, you know, what his role is and how he deals with this ethical dilemma as well. Um, we feel very strong. Our group feels very strong about the fact that we can execute this within the time we have. And, um, yep, so that wraps it up. Uh, thank you for watching. Um, have a great day. Bye-bye.